like Jump people on fo- Dave Chappelle's stage. I'm just kidding. I don't know why that guy went up there, but oh, I, I actually do want to talk about that shit. I do too. <laughs> so at the time of recording, that shit happened last night. I know. Okay, so it's so weird because I saw that him and Chris Rock were going to be out here in the Hollywood Bowl, and I was like, that'd be so cool. My first time at the Hollywood Bowl to see two of my favorite comedians. And I'm like, damn, I could have been there. That would have been crazy. I'm happy that they handled it the way they did because it's extremely dangerous to go up on stage. What the fuck is wrong with Don't run on a field. Don't run on stage. It's just dangerous. There's so much about this. Like, First and foremost, it illustrates once again why security in Los Angeles is a goddamn joke. Yeah, because Dave had to put up his own fight. Well, and it's one of those things where like, most people are probably blissfully aware, unaware of this shit. But most security contractors, like venue security, are third-party contractors hired out to the lowest fucking bidder. Mm. There was a time while in L.A. where I was the head of security for a venue. Ah. The contractor I worked for, I got random fucking people every fucking show. So they're not going to take it seriously? Yeah, some of them would. Some of them would take it too seriously. Hmm. You, you get the ones that wanted to be in the military, just military, or wanted to be, <laughs> or wanted to be a cop, or just want, yeah. are on a fucking power trip. Yes, but these people are making twelve. Like when I was doing it, maybe twelve dollars an hour. Yeah, and that's not that's not enough to move people's motivation sometimes. Right, or if they are motivated, it's because they're on a weird power trip. <laughs> yeah, and it it's just was fucked, absolutely fucked. And the problem is, especially when you get into. High level productions because the venue I worked at did some really high level fucking shit. Mm-hmm. We did events for like the David Lynch Foundation and we did stuff for um, Sundance. Like they did like some LA based sun- Like we did some really high end shit, but it's like on one hand, if someone rushes the fucking stage, is that part of the show? Am I going to get fired mm-hmm. for interfering with the show? Because stage managers don't tell us shit. Oh my, see, it's like a broken. But on the flip side, you have fucking morons who are doing this job for $12 an hour. We had, I don't know why, I do not fucking know why, but the venue I worked at was a hard seated theater. We had fucking Marilyn Manson there. Mm. And so no mosh pit area? No mosh pit area, hard seated theater. No, they need to mosh. And the promoter wouldn't even give me as many guards as I requested. That's bad. That's a recipe for disaster. Night of the, yeah, it was an absolute mess because people paid a lot of money to be fucking front row. Yeah. And we didn't have enough bodies to like stop people from just walking up to the barricade. Oh my God. And then you add in the fact that we're informed by the road crew. This is like the second or third night of the tour. One of the idiots from the opener had posted their laminate on Instagram. So there were counterfeit laminates out already. Oh, so it was going to be flooded with way more people than. Well, it's just you have people with fake backstage passes. Right. So then you that's just there's gonna be way too much people already with the fact that you don't have enough guards. One of my fucking idiots, like, no matter what, I don't care if you were fucking the president of the United States, during the show, no one walks from the floor onto the stage. Mm-hmm. Period. They have to go through backstage if they're gonna go on stage. Yeah. One of my fucking idiots let some guy who had an all access just walk up on the stage. And that was a counterfeit and all access. That's what I was going to say. And then there was all the counterfeit ones. So, oh no. Disaster. Yeah. And this is the kind of shit you have at a high end venue. Yeah. And that's a huge name. Marilyn Manson, huge. So, I still have one of those counterfeit fucking passes some more because I caught people in. Oh Crazy. my God. Crazy. Fucking idiot. Like, like, yo, you got to go back to your seat. Well, I don't have a seat. What do you mean you don't have a seat? And he flashes the all access at me. I'm like, that ain't real. You're out, you go. Wow. And this dude had the the fucking gall as I'm 86 and him from the venue. Can I hold on to that? I'm like, no. What in what world do you think I'd let you get that back so you could just walk right back in so, when I'm not exactly. picking? Exactly. So then you can just come and do the same thing? Like yeah. were you born yesterday? But the problem is there was probably two or three guys there that'd be like, um oh, let him exactly because they don't care enough. Or just Or they don't know. Just, these are people working twelve dollar an hour jobs. Right. Because a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of these LA contractors will just like, you have a guard card and a pulse, welcome to the job. Yeah, so they're not like making it as difficult as it is to get the job. So they'll take anybody. Yeah, because the job's low paying. Mm hmm. That's the 
problem. Raise our wages. Yeah. So that dude got on stage in the first place because it was probably some low paid motherfucker who either was dicking around on his phone or it was just like, I'm not getting insurance. I'm not going to actually wrestle a dude. And not exactly because it's $12 an hour. Am I going to freaking risk my life for that? Because you never know when somebody's running up a stage, you never know what the fuck they're going to do. Oh, yeah. 100 percent. 100 fucking percent. Yeah, that's why I'm really shocked the dude did it to Dave Chappelle. Because I'm like, of course Dave Chappelle's going to fight you. D- Who do you think you've run it up on stage? I, I mean, I, I made a joke on my Twitter about this last night, but it's like, yo, this ain't early 2000s Chappelle show, Dave. He ain't skinny anymore. Yeah, he is no, swole as shit. I think I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. He's swole as hell. Yes. You made a mistake, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because he's not. He's built now. He's all bulky when you watch yeah. him. Like, you're not tackling... Fucking 2022 Dave Chappelle. Thank you. Like, no, he's fucking huge. And Dave's tall, too. That's another thing. He's a really tall guy. So then you're going to just run up on the... No. The fuck is wrong with you? Well, and the thing about it is I posted this on someone else's social media. I hope to fuck that they, A, press charges, and B, they fucking stick. So I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Dimebag Daryl, the guitarist from Pantera, who was killed on stage in 2003. What? No. Was it oh, I've never heard of this. I'm ashamed of myself after working at a record store for so long and not knowing this. Yeah, but uh, Dimebag Daryl Abbott was killed on stage in Columbus, Ohio. No, it was 2004. It was 2004. The gunman jumped on stage and just started fucking shooting. But what happened a couple months before that is that dude tried to rush the stage in Cincinnati, Ohio. Security stopped him, just fucked him up and let him go. They like they took didn't him out. press the charge. Right. They took him backstage and fucked him up uh, and then sent him on his way. So he came back to another show months later with a fucking gun. And everything, yeah. The dude was delusional. Like, the guy was yes. schizophrenic. Right. Because I don't know, to me, running out to any of the entertainment, to the stage, the field, whatever it is, you have to have some type of delusion because you are instantly going to get stopped. And even if you don't get stopped, there's going to be some type of repercussions from that. Like, it... You have to have some weird type of... Well, and, but it also was your intent. Like some idiot running across the football field streaking. Then they're probably drunk. They're drunk. Right. Or they're just like... But the running up and trying to do something, like anybody who has the like, oh, I'm going to go do a prank or something, or oh, I'm going to... Because I saw the girl that got tackled trying to run up on the basketball game with the fucking Grizzlies or whatever. And I'm like, how is she... What do you think is going to happen? Like, what is wrong with these people? But the thing is, delusional. the guy made it to Chappelle. The guy made it to Chappelle. Exactly. That's what's really dangerous. The basketball game, that security guards, they were on point. But um, no. Uh, if That's the thing I said, a good thing for Dave Chappelle for putting up a fight. Because even if that was somebody just who wasn't prepared, because to me, Chappelle's prepared to fight. Probably at any point. But if that's somebody who's not prepared, he could have really fucked them up. And we don't know what he had. Like, what if he was going to stab somebody? It's so Appar- easy to get Apparently he had a weapon on him. Yes, I'm, it's so easy to get shanked and shit that you're just going to fucking let somebody run up on stage. No, that's that's really where security matters a lot. Right. And that's the problem with how security is treated in L.A. It is treated as just like a line item and they're for show. Like, there's such different tiers of security in L.A. There's... Yeah, you know, the people that are working like the venue that are basically just there for show. And then there's people who like actually do exec protect for celebrities that are generally a lot of cases like ex police, ex special forces. Like those people know what the fuck they're doing. Right. The more trained. Well, and they're also getting salaries that fucking represent paying more, ex- representing what's worth somebody's life, essentially. Because right. that's what security is, is you're protecting somebody's life. So. In theory, yes, but in a lot of cases, you're really the expectation for security is to observe and report. Yeah. It's just in the worst of cases, yeah, you would be there for that barrier if anybody were trying to be super crazy and kill I don't know. When I was working on venue, like, if someone had rushed a stage with a real weapon? Well, that's the thing. They don't pay anybody enough. And it's also, are these people really equipped? No, they're not. They're exactly. fucking not. Exactly. I mean, you're even taught that in basic little ass jobs like in retail you're not chasing after somebody you never know what somebody is carrying on them well and every security job i've ever held in this fucking town there's been no fucking training there was no orientation (laughs) class right and how much people know the self-defense they would need to want to fight somebody without a weapon so it does come down to the point of if there's not the proper resources nobody i'm not going to put up a fight 
another story from the venue. Like we we did have a guy rush the stage during an EDM show. Uh, my guys got him off the stage immediately, and I get a call on the walkie about like that they're eighty six him out the back door, and this dude is like. We had push doors on the, like the theater. He is wrapped around it, like with both arms. And we got him horizontal at one point as he's wrapped around. Oh my god! We got him out the fucking door, but it's like technically, what point do we fuck him up? Right, because you never fucking know what somebody's gonna do, and they would come back. Oh no, that asshole did come back. Yeah, see, that's that's he, why the Pantera example. That's sad as fuck because. People well, and can be so delusional and have no clue. Like I also got a very important lesson in dealing with LAPD that night. So we 86 him out the back door. He comes back around to the front to like the box office. Like, oh, I I, I got locked. You know, like, no, we 86 you. Get the fuck out of here. He goes back around because the smoking patio is in the back. Mm-hmm. Walks back to the smoking patio. I get a report that he's back there. I'm like, yo, off the premises, dude. You are trespassing. Yeah. We walk him down the alley. He makes the mistake of like just touching one of my guys. He's like, who just goes, don't touch me, and shoves the dude to the ground. <laughs> and this dumb motherfucker, like, while he's on the ground, starts to go into his pockets. Because in his mind, he's going to pull his cell phone to try to film us. Oh. I mean, I, I restrained his hand so fucking fast. Like, what, and it's like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Exactly, because you don't know what they're pulling out. It, it, to me, if somebody's reaching their pockets, they're pulling out a weapon. Yeah, mine too. That's like, why I'm I, not going to be like, oh, you're getting his phone. Like, no, did no, you well, I mean, shoot me? Right, that's why I grabbed his fucking hands and... Exactly. So like what? What the fuck? Did, and there's three of us there. We would, we probably should have fucked him up, but we what we we called LAPD. We walked him to the front. LAPD showed up, put him in fucking bracelets. They're like, "What do you want us to do?" And I'm like, "What do you guys think?" In my mind, I'm like, "You're the cops. I'm not gonna tell you exactly. what." Exactly. You're not. You're not and a cop. You're security. Right. They fucking gave him a harsh talking to him and told him to go. Motherfucker came back again. Oh my god. Came back a fucking. We called the cops again. And the next set of cops, they handcuffed him and then ended up releasing him to his girlfriend. So they didn't take any of it seriously. All right. Well, I definitely should have, in hindsight, told the first set of cops, like, take him away. Right. He should have been explicit. Like, I did, sorry, officers. I didn't realize I had to tell you, hey, this guy's trespassing. We've kicked him out like three times. Yeah. Arrest him. Did they just not understand the seriousness of this? Do you think they wanted to do the paperwork on it? Like, No. They, cops never want to do paperwork. There's a reason that downtown LA has like a separate like bike patrol funny they do um same venue uh, like on a different part of it like we had a full-on brawl at one point and before the cops responded the fucking bike guys showed up and handcuffed those dudes it's crazy smart though you would need bikes to get around because there's too much of that fucking traffic but it was one of those things where like we all had handcuffs and like management's like yeah don't put cuffs on people that's paperwork like they're specifically told us like the only time you're putting bracelets on someone is like it's last ditch crazy well because as a security guard you have the potential of getting sued for like unlawful de- imprisonment all the liability yeah, issues the li- of it that makes like, sense. and the, these small security contractors don't want to pay out any fucking liability issues mm-hmm. so if you want to put if you end up having to put hands on somebody it's a big fucking problem yeah that makes sense it's like a big fucking problem they don't you know at the end of the day they weren't giving me insurance so i wasn't putting hands on anybody unless i had to Right, because you're gonna you end up risking your life essentially. Uh, I'm not even worried about my life. I'm more worried about like, oh hey, if I fucking sprain my fucking shoulder, fucking this dude up. Right, and that's livelihood. Yeah, so that still matters in a way. Oh no, it matters more. If I'm because dead, I will be dead. I don't have to deal with it. Right, I don't have to deal with shit at that point. Yeah, that's all y'all's because problem. No insurance, and you're paying medical bills and everything for all this stupid shit that you didn't really have to do just because somebody wants to be crazy and delusional. Yeah. But it's why security is not taken seriously. Well, and the, it's such a fucked up job because you shouldn't take them seriously. They're on, in a lot of cases, if they're semi competent at their job, they're just doing it because they're on a power trip. Right. Or it's the only job they could get. I mean, a lot of times yeah, but in then, America, you're just getting a job because you can get a job. It's not right. Like, and then those are people who are generally grossly incompetent at the job. And then, the, and then it's the ones who are like, this is my destiny. And then they take it way too seriously. Like, I'm going to be a cop. And, 